The first welded starship looked incredibly rough and irritating, unlike something that could ever survive a journey into space. The starships that SpaceX produces now look much more light and sophisticated, with smooth and metalwork and welds that are much less noticeable. So how did Starship go from making the Starship look like a crazy masquerade to a smooth finishing in just a few years? And will it ever look completely smooth and shiny like it does in animation videos? Let's find out in today's video. On the first Starship, called the Mark 1 Predator, Type, the welds were heavily eroded and the surface had cracks and rough edges. To improve these welds, SpaceX started grinding them down until they were even with the surface. Although this seemed like a poor attempt to restore some shininess, this process was actually done to strengthen the welds, but the downside is that since the stainless steel will not be painted, the welded sharp edges would eventually corrode due to electrolytic reactions with the exposed sharp edges and the atmosphere and won't give room for SpaceX to accomplish the goal of reusability. Once Starship is pressurized, the sharp edges and small cracks create pressure points that cause much larger cracks. Therefore, polishing the surface removed these flaws and reduced the possibility of a weld failing. Theoretically, each welding spot should be as strong as the metal around it, but the first test of Starship showed it wasn't. Mark 1 blew up because one of the horizontal welds broke, which caused the bulkhead to fly off. So SpaceX made some big changes to the next version of the Starship prototype. Each ring was made from a single thin sheet of stainless steel, so much less welding was needed. They also switched from 301 stainless steel to 304L stainless steel which was much less likely to rust when it was welded. At this point they also switched to friction stair welding which gave them more control over the welding arc and let the welder tighten it up and weld much deeper into the metal. This made the welds much thinner and didn't wrap the metal around them much. SpaceX has also started to buy robot welding machines from Liberty and Kuka. These machines are similar to the ones in Tesla factories. With these changes, SpaceX SpaceX could automate a big part of the process and start making cleaner, more accurate welds. On the other hand, the early Starship prototypes used a method of welding called flux core. This method sends a voltage through a metal wire, creating an arc between the wire and the metal, which melts the metal. The end of the metal wire also melts and falls into the molten stainless steel, filling any holes or cracks. With flux core welding, the metal wire is wrapped in a solid material that, when it burns, gives off a gas that protects the weld. This protects the weld and stops it from reacting with the oxygen in our atmosphere which would cause corrosion. This works well when you're inside a controlled environment, but in the case of friction stir welding, it's a different ball game. Let's give you a deep knowledge about how this friction stir welding or FSW actually works. Friction stir welding was a method created by the Welding Institute TWI Limited in 1991. This means that it has been around for a long time, even before the birth of SpaceX. Even though it was discovered more than 30 years ago, its popularity has grown quickly over the past few years. This is because modern engineering applications require more strength and durability. FSW was a unique way to join metals together. It is different from traditional methods like gas welding or arc welding because it is a solid state welding method that doesn't require melting either of the joined materials. Instead, they have been softened to the point that they can penetrate into each other's surface with a little assistance. This approach resulted in remarkable mechanical qualities like fatigue, strength and stiffness and negligible weld flaws. Furthermore, this welding technology says saves material waste and offers an improved look with lesser surface finishing requirements. Again, one of the most renowned advantages is that it has no negative environmental effects because hazardous fumes are not produced during the entire process. When SpaceX launched Falcon Heavy Rocket into space with the Tesla Roadster as a payload, the particular Falcon was welded using friction stir welding or FSW. This emphasizes the importance of FSW in the space industry and its potential application in future engineering applications. FSW was also used by SpaceX welding engineers to connect the break-off fuel tanks in their rocket, which play an important role in propelling the spacecraft once it enters space and settles into orbit. The reason for this application was the need for greater strength in break-off fuel tanks of such a strong rocket, which could not be achieved by traditional welding methods such as liquid-state welding or non-permanent joints such as rivets. Friction stir welding was used on the first Falcon Heavy break-off tanks and has since become widely used in space applications. SpaceX had to adopt the FSW method of welding to get a perfect streamline of the Starship and to reduce air drag and turbulence as it tried to leave the Earth's atmosphere. Steve Dodds, section manager for friction and forge processes, shared his thoughts about how this type of magnificent welding works. It's a solid-state welding technique. When you see normal welding, you create a melt pool, liquid between two plates, then let it cool. It freezes and joins the two plates together. What we're doing is completely different. We're not getting it anywhere near as hot. We're rubbing the parts 
hot using a tool, we're getting them so hot that they go soft, but they are still solid. It doesn't flow. It's a bit like Play-Doh or Plasticine. It needs pushing around. We mix the two materials together. This process helps ensure a strong weld. This is important because when you make a product, you normally make the weld the fattest part because you know it will be the weakest. It has to be thicker to compensate for the weakness. But with the invented technique, you're not creating all that damage, so your whole product can be lighter and slender, Steve explained. Of course, this is great for space applications such as Falcon Heavy Launchers and the Starship. It works wonderfully well to melt the stainless steel sheet into one another while still achieving a smooth weld without leaving any rough looking surface as in the case of arc welding. More importantly for starships you can link materials that you can't physically weld together using a melting approach because they don't stick together afterward. TWI first patented the technology in the 1990s. The patent expired after 20 years but the company has continued to develop what is more rightly known as a forging technology rather than welding. Think fitting horseshoes rather than flying spots. One of the first major benefits of friction stir welding was the ability to use aluminium for space travel. That was completely unheard of since they couldn't be bonded in other ways, so this completely opened the use of lightweight, super strong alloys for space flight. We worked closely with Boeing on the Delta II rocket launcher tank with the first supersized demonstrator tank here at TWI. It was the seminal use of it. From there on, it spread like wildfire, and we've helped most rocket boost manufacturers. The latest is that we can use friction stir weld titanium, which is desirable. Once you get a satellite up there, you have to have many small tanks which hold the fuel to give it spurts of direction change to help it in orbit. It is widely used in the manufacturing of launch vehicles and spacecraft. You no longer need to drill a hole or fill it with a thick material to remove rivets. Unlike the melting process, you do not need to insert a wire. Instead, you use two plates as is, so you're not adding or removing weights. It's net neutral. Friction stir welding is a low-cost, environmentally friendly and energy efficient efficient method that gives high tensile and fatigue strength. Unsurprisingly, it's been embraced for various purposes, especially by the automotive sector. Elon Musk's Tesla company adapted the new FSW welding technique for the welding of electric vehicles, but in this case, robots do the job. Normally, you can only weld two of the same types of aluminium, but on your car, you want the door to be stronger by the hinges, so you may need a thicker, more resistant material, and in a more sophisticated portion of the door, you will want a formable material for aesthetic appeal. However, friction stir welding allows you to investigate the welding of very dissimilar materials together, enabling you to create a selective design or tailor welded pieces that place the correct material in the right spot for the right use. Friction stir welds are now used on aircraft like the Eclipse 500, in shipbuilding, on the Victoria line of the London Underground, in high-end audio speakers, nuclear waste canisters, and even in the Apple iMac. So it's the best sophisticated technology now employs. Should that be super massive now that SpaceX has employed the welding technique? It's Seems like everything is working well for SpaceX, they have finally even completed the OLT2 and Elon Musk just revealed the first booster at 39A. Click on the video to know more.